Welcome to the GX Dad channel. I have a 12 volt refrigerator here today. These are becoming extremely popular, whether you're doing camping, overlanding, van life, or you're just using them around town. When I was in the market shopping for this refrigerator right here, one of the things that I was really concerned about is how much battery capacity I need to run this. And in order to figure that out, I need to know the power consumption on this. According to the manufacturer, this thing uses 50 watts. Let's say I take a typical example of what I expect to use this as. So if I'm going to use it on a two day camping trip, let's say maybe I use 36 hours of battery runtime. If I do a simple calculation of saying 36 hours times 50 watts, it yields 1800 watt hours. That's a huge number for battery capacity and it doesn't make sense. So what I decided to do is buy the refrigerator, then run some experiments to measure how much power this really does use, and finally make this video so I can share the results with you so you can figure out how much power you need to power your 12 volt refrigerator. So stick around. Earlier I mentioned that this doesn't really use 50 watts, and it actually it does and it doesn't. So let me explain. The main consumer of power on this refrigerator is going to be the compressor, but the compressor is not running all the time. The compressor is only going to be running when it needs to cool the inside of the refrigerator. So this, it runs until it hits a temperature set point and it shuts off. So the ratio of time between it running and it not running is called the duty cycle. The duty cycle is also a function of the difference between the outside ambient temperature and the inside temperature inside the refrigerator. So the greater the difference between the outside and inside temperature, the more power this is going to use. To put this another way, if I use this in a hot desert climate, this is going to use a lot more power than if, say, if I used it in a cooler mountain climate. Next, let's go into the experiments that I ran to measure how much power this uses. I ran a series of experiments to figure out how much power this uses in a bunch of different co conditions. So to start off, I used a power meter like this one to actually measure how many um, kilowatt hours I was using during the test. I used the AC adapter on the refrigerator to power the fridge so I could use the power meter. I also, I'm more concerned with the steady state um, power consumption of this refrigerator rather than the cool down cycle. So before each test, I actually cooled it down, let it stabilize that temperature before I started the data collection. And I also did all the tests in the shade. So the radiant heat sunlight is not gonna have an impact on the data here. So something to be aware of in the data. And then finally, I ran all these tests in a really long duration to ensure that I had a really good stable average power measurement. So. Let me go into the data now. I took the data from all these experiments and I plotted them in a graph. On this graph, I have an x-axis, which is going to be the temperature of delta. That's the difference between the outside temperature and the temperature set point inside the refrigerator. And on the y-axis, I have the actual average power consumption. So this is the rate of power it's actually using at that temperature delta. So given an actual temperature delta, let's say if I know that I have a 50 degree temperature delta is how I want to use it, I can find out how much power the refrigerator is going to use in that situation. Now that we have this data, let's walk through an example of how would we use this data to figure out how much power or battery capacity I'm going to need to run this for a given use. In order to do this, you need to know three things. The first thing is you're going to have to know what average ambient temperature you expect to use this at. Um, the second thing is, what's the temperature set point? Are you going to be using this as a temp freezer? Are you going to be using it as a refrigerator? Those two things combined to give you the temperature delta. And then the third thing that you need to know is how long you need to have this running on the battery. So let me walk through the same example that we went through earlier. Let's say I'm doing my two-day camping trip again, and I'm going to be running for 36 hours. Um, let's say that I expect my average outside temperature to be 85 degrees, it's day and night average there when I'm going to be using it. And the temperature set point in here is going to be 35. So 85 minus 35 gives me a 50 degree temperature difference. 
If I go to the graph, I look at 50 degree temperature differential, and it's going to tell me that that's going to be about 14 watts. So I take my 36 hours times 14 watts, and that gives me just over 500 watt hours of power. So I'm going to need over 500 watt hours of power to power this refrigerator during that camping trip. Note that that's completely different than this example earlier, assuming that it uses 50 watts, because that was 1800 watts. If I'm going to use this in the sunlight, in the desert, in Phoenix, it's probably going to be continuously running. It's going to be closer to the 50 watts. I hope you can use this information in this video to help you calculate how much power you're going to need to run your refrigerator. This is a 55 quart refrigerator. It's maybe a little bit cheaper, but I think it's still going to give you a good ballpark of how much power you're going to use regardless of the different types of refrigerators. So if it's a smaller refrigerator, maybe it's going to use less power. If it's a better quality, higher end brand like a Dometic or an ARB, maybe it's going to be a little bit more power efficient, but I think this gives you a good ballpark. So thank you for watching my video and subscribe. Now for some little bit of bonus. How do you maximize how much power this actually uses? Um, and I came up with a bunch of other little tests and let me show you the table of data here. And there's a lot of other factors that are gonna impact how much power this uses and how can we make it better? So one of the things being, one of the tips and tricks being cool down cycle. Don't plug this in to your car on your battery and then turn it on. It's gonna use a lot more power to cool it down than once it gets to its steady state. So what I do is I cool it down before I use it. So I plug it into the wall at home, I load it up, I let it stabilize the temperature, maybe the night before, and then the day of I can load this back into my car and use it the way I want to. That's gonna use a lot less power off your battery. The other thing that you can do is try to keep it in the shade or also um, get some reflective insulation like I have here. I have, if we look at the data of the difference between the um, insulated and not insulated, I have this data um, here. You can see there's a big difference. And then finally, there's the, the max cool versus eco. This provi it didn't provide a lot of difference, but it does have a difference in how it runs. In the eco mode, this thing maxes out at 50 watts. It will not run more than 50 watts on the compressor. It stays at a single speed. If I put it in max cool, that helps it cool down faster and does that by increasing the speed of the compressor, which I've seen this thing spike all the way up to 80 watts actually in max cool. So that, that's gonna be more helpful in an extreme situation also, where this might not have enough cooling capability to keep up with, let's say, in the sun and 118 degrees. So I put it in max cool there, but it's gonna use a little bit more power. So those are a few other tips and tricks that you can use to maximize the efficiency that you have on your um, refrigerator. This insulation is not that expensive. Just, I used some foil tape to attach it, um, wrap it around, it doesn't look too bad, I guess. It's just kind of shiny and silvery, but it makes a difference in the sunlight. It doesn't make a big difference on the, if you look at the data between insulated and not insulated in the, in the shade, not that big of a difference, but in your car, you're probably going to have situations where sunlight is shining out through your windows sometimes and it can have an impact there. Or if you take it outside, um, put it outside your rig and the sun starts shining on it, you want it to be protected. So a few other things. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you like it. S subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you.